once again, Arun Ghosh from MCIS. And this is my graduate student, Tajuddin. So what he's doing, he's doing his uh, master's thesis under my guidance. And what he will present today, this is his like, you know, I would say uh, first project. And this project uh, has been accepted um, at IEEE Southeast Con. So I think he will present it next month, right? And now let's hear from, from Taj. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, so it's Taj Uddin, and I'm doing a project on the Empowering Adolescent Online Safety, examining the current trends and future directions. Then I did this research in the, the mentorship of uh, Dr. Ghosh. And so as we know, uh, as most of the teenagers use online, they're busy with uh, online use, there is a chance for them uh, encountering different uh, challenges. And so the main aim of this research was to examine what are those challenges and find how can we utilize technology to overcome those challenges. So the challenges are caused by technology and also the technology itself can be used in that leverage to overcome those challenges. So uh, the main uh, way we did our research was aiming at answering three different research questions. The first one was what are the risks teenagers face online and how can we use technology to overcome those risks and while uh, overcoming the risk what some challenges can we face while executing those uh, strategies and how can we overcome those challenges. So the main methodology we used for the research was literature review. So we, uh, we did some search using different keywords in different research databases like IEEE, Explore, the ACM, ACM Digital, and Google Scholar, and many more using the relevant keywords, but also we, after getting a specific number of papers, we reviewed the references so that we can end more, uh, more papers. And after that, uh, we set our goals, and our goal was to use the papers between 2015 and 2023 so that we can make sure that uh, the papers get are more relevant and also more up-to-date. And after getting 51 papers, we went through them and read the abstract of each one of them and we picked 21 papers which were more on topic and we made a summary of each of the 21 papers and we started gathering data and uh, for each of the papers we tried to find common themes uh, which are related to our, our topic and then after that we uh, made uh, some search based on our research question and we made the answers for those three research questions. And these were our findings. So there are a lot of impacts on, te on technology, but based on the papers we got, they were the most common one of them uh, was the social isolation, because these teenagers, they are using the internet, and the internet becomes more, and these devices become more as their companion. And this affects them in a way that they become like more isolated. So they become like more into technology, into devices than interacting with real human beings. And another effect was cyberbullying. And as teenagers, they are using, uh, I mean, social media, they're using like online gaming. And they can overcome, and they can come through online harassment, and they can come through bullying. And this is uh, experienced in more, many of these recent papers. And also there is internet addiction. Uh, I travel a lot and most of the time when I'm in the bus, you see most of the people, maybe it's a two hour travel, but you don't know each other. Like they are teenagers and as teenagers they need to interact and socialize, but socialization, so, socialization has lost because people are very busy with their devices and they're becoming very addicted and they don't get time to even know each other. You're sitting with someone beside you, you don't know even their name and you're traveling with them for an hour or two. And another impact of technology to teenagers is the exposure to an appropriate content. 
as we know, the internet is, is both good and bad. It has a lot of positive and a lot of negative. So it depends on what we choose and what we look. But sometimes, as teenagers, they can, fa they can fail to choose. But also, they can unintentionally uh, encounter some inappropriate uh, content, especially while playing video games or while doing some search online. But also, there is the privacy and reputation risk. And I use social media, and you can see some of the people, the way they use social media, they expose every aspect of their life, especially teenagers. Oh, I went to beach, I went to vacation in this. And this ruins their privacy because that's your private life, but they don't understand that they make that public and this is ruining their privacy, but also it might as well ruin their reputation. But also there's an issue with sleep deprivation. And I teach in a high school, sometimes uh, in the morning you find the students sleeping on, in class. I usually ask them, like, why are you sleeping? The answer, the simple answer is that, oh, I slept late at night. What were you doing? Oh, I was playing video games. That is a problem. So this technology it is very good, but sometimes it is, if it's not controlled, especially for teenagers, they become unscheduled. They don't have specific schedule to do things, and that is uh, a problem. So we came up with different uh, solutions where, where we can use technology to overcome these challenges. And the most common of them was parental control, where we can use the different applications to set some firewalls so that we can regulate and monitor what the teenagers are doing online, but also even limit the time on their spending online. online. But also another thing was uh, implementing the artificial intelligent content filters adoption which is like, uh, because these kids are online sometimes on their own, but if we use AI, it means that they, we can make sure that they don't uh, encounter all this filth and all this uh, risk. But also with AI, we can make sure that uh, uh, like uh, everything which is the people are encountering is appropriate to their age. But also there is secure messaging applications uh, because these students, I mean teenagers, they are chatting online and using secure messaging application we can make sure that these students, they don't come, uh, they, don't, they don't encounter uh, cyberbullying and also any kind of messages which is associated to that. But also online safety education, as teenagers they need to know uh, the methodologies on how to become safe online and we can use technology to provide that knowledge to them. And uh, of course, we came with the solution, but implementing those solutions is not easy. There's a lot of challenges uh, we can face. One of them is privacy concern. For example, you are introducing a parental control application. How can we implement that without, uh, without altering the teenager's privacy? That is also a problem. Also, of a restriction. How can we implement these uh, rules without being overly strict? But also, fast changing landscape. As technology is growing, many more applications are being uh, developed. So how can we develop an application which will be going with time, which will not like, just like work for one year and then it expires? And also, content moderation. So how can we make sure that the application we're developing can moderate uh, harmful or inappropriate content uh, in a good scale. But also digital literacy. So you can say that we're developing uh, a parental control application, but how many of the parents will be able to use these applications? So digital literacy is a problem, but also even for the teenagers themselves, they are lacking uh, knowledge on how, I mean, on why. Because sometimes you might try to save them and make them safe, but if they don't have knowledge on why should they be safe and how can they be safe, then we'll be losing our time implementing all these strategies which is for their benefits. So how can we overcome these challenges? Uh, one of the ways is introducing different uh, education programs to educate teenagers, but also not only teenagers, even the parents 
on the importance of safety online and how can we stay safe online, but also creating adaptive solutions, making solutions which will not just like last for one month or one year, but they will last for a long time, but also tailored resources, using the available resources and to overcome and to, I mean, to implement these solutions and also educate the teenagers and the parents in the world at large. So there are a lot of uh, gaps in the current literature uh, when it comes to online safety for education. One is, uh, so we have done the research and most of the research are only limited to a specific geographic location. So there is a need to make more research which will be inclusive, which will take input from different geographic locations so that when we make the solutions, they are as inclusive as possible. But also there is a need for the youth input in the design process because we are designing the application and the main people who will be using this application are the teenagers. So there is a need to incorporate the input so that they, uh, they can tell what the problem they are, facing, they are facing and also they can have more suggestions on how can we uh, overcome those challenges. But also we need to create age appropriate design. So creating something which will, uh, will work on everybody but based on their age. It's not just like working on the teenager and leave everybody behind, no. It work on everyone but based on their age. So conclusive, conclusively, so as we have seen, technology is very important and very good but also if used, if used in a negative way it can be very harmful. So it's very important to find different solutions, find the ways to utilize our technology mainly by providing the education, especially to the teenagers, on how can be, they be safe and why do they need to be safe online and what impact can, be, can they face, especially in the future, because of the misuse of technology. As Dr. Arup Ghosh, this paper was uh, submitted to the alt for e and it was uh, approved for publication in the 2024 conference and we'll be presenting it in the next month. Thank you very much, and any uh, contribution or question. Has the Dr. Bush um, helped you in selecting this topic? Uh, the topic we worked on together because it was a very challenge, so I suggested and he approved it. So, uh, I know that you, you, you made some suggestions or uh, came up with possible solutions. The best approach is uh, education, so educating the teens on why, what is the importance of them being safe online, because they are the one uh, encountering these problems, so if they don't know why should they be safe, then we'll be losing our time. So the best approach is knowledge, but also empowerment, empowering them instead of like being restricted, and also uh, I was thinking earlier instead of calling even parental control, we can find another name because parental control, it's more of the control. Find some other name so that we can empower youth and they can feel that, oh, we are being protected instead of feeling that they're being restricted. Yeah, and you already asked that, uh, while you're talking, I was thinking that some aspect that you described, uh, one of the probably or the worst one could be actually like you said, Steve, uh, can some aspect be actually somehow turned into a good one? I mean, yes. not, not that one aspect is bad. I mean, it's not bad, what, what you pointed out. I'm just asking you think, you know, um, could be like some, somewhat, you know, replacing a bad habit with a good habit. Would that be a good idea? Let me pause you there, Monica, because we are 10 minutes behind. So oh, this discussion sorry. will be great for you guys to have. Thank you. So thank you so much.